what are you guys up to? So it's 3.45, 3.44 a.m. Saturday, June 10th here. This is going to be a short uh, USMLE uh, live, okay? And my others, they actually got to be about three hours, but I'm just going to say straight up we'll do one hour of short Q&A. So if you guys have comments, you can just drop them in uh, the live chat here. I actually just got off doing an IG live, so I did that out on the street for a little bit. Uh, but if you guys have any uh, Q&A, we can just do that right here. I didn't, I didn't announce that I was doing this. So obviously the first minute or so. Yo, what's going on, Ozjid? How's it going? Yo, you're first here. So if you want to ask any like USMLE questions, like I'll, yeah, that's right. All right. So it'll start to pick up a bit. Yeah, just drop some comments. Drop some comments. I'll answer USMLE questions. We'll do one hour of just some Q&A. Okay. So hey, Mike, how's it going? Uh, Ray Fay, yeah, hey, how's it going? Subby, all right, Subby, let's see. Low 70s and last three NBMEs, uh, currently on NBME 23, all good. Yeah, dude, low 70s, fucking excellent. That's funny that you say, is that good? Because, like, or am I good to keep going forward? Because that's like, that's that's trolling. That's so good. A lot of people fucking watching this right now would love to have low 70s on NBME. So that's really, really good. Um, I've talked about how when you start doing the NBME exams, you're going to finish QBank, then you're going to go on to 20 and 21. And if you're scoring under 60% correct on 20 and 21, I want you not going forward to NBME 22, and I want you going back to all your QBank and corrects prior to touching 22. Uh, students who are scoring mid-60s on the NBME exams, obviously, uh, that's your borderline pass mark-ish. So high 60s, good. 70s, excellent. Okay, in terms of passing step one. So just drop comments, guys. Drop comments. I'll do a quick hour here of the USMLE stuff. Uh, Doc AV says, hey, what's going on? Prachi, hello. Django, hello. What's going on? Arsene, hey, hey. Uh, Ishika, Ishika. Uh, what to do in the last month of preparation for USMLE step one? It's going to be basically all NBMEs. So what's going to happen is, you're going to come off QBank and you're going to basically have like a month and four ish days. And what I want you doing is, and we're going to assume that your scores are pretty good. Okay. We're going to assume, let's say you're getting around like high sixties or above, and we're just going to push you through the NBMEs. What I want you doing in the final month is you're going to do and you're two days per NBME exam. Uh, you're going to do NBME 22 days, NBME 21, two days. You're going to make Anki cards of your incorrects. Okay. You're going to take screenshots of your incorrects. So let's say you get, let's just as an example, okay, just fuck the percentages. We'll just go, let's say you get 70 wrong in NBME 20. You're going to screenshot those incorrects in Anki, okay? Review that over two days because you might not finish the entirety of the review of NBME 20 on the first day. So we'll give you a second day. Maybe you have two more blocks, okay? Then day three. So now we're going to start NBME 21. Same deal. You're going to screenshot your incorrects from 21. Let's say it's another 70 that you get wrong. And those 70 incorrects, you're going to screenshot those with the same Anki deck as NBME 20. That's what you're going to do. And then we're going to give you a second day to uh, review NBME 21. When you finish the entirety of your review of NBME 21, all 200 questions, and you say, well, what do I do the rest of the day now? I want you to redo the seven. I want you to re-review the 70 incorrects in the Anki from NBME 20. Okay, that you just fucking did two days earlier. So all the screenshots are going in the same Anki deck. You're not making separate Anki decks for, for the NBMEs right now. You're going to go on to NBME 22. Okay, you're going to review it just as you did 2021. You're going to screenshot those 70 incorrects you get NBME 22 and in the same Anki deck as NBME 2021. The second day after you finish your review of NBME 22, you're going to redo all those incorrects from 20 and 21 again that you just fucking did. Okay, so you're stacking the review. You're starting to memorize the pattern here, not dramatic. You go on NBB 23, same deal. After you finish the review of 23 and screenshotting into the Anki deck, you're going to redo your incorrects from 20, 21, 22, okay? Now, you're going to have one ginormous Anki deck for 20 through 24 offline and free 120. So 20 through 24, that's five NBMEs. Free 120, it's a sixth form. So all those are going to go into one Anki deck. Then I want you going on to 25 through 31. You're going to repeat that process for a second fresh Anki deck, and you're going to be memorizing going through. There's other tactics I have as far as when you finish free 120 and the review of all the Anki, before you go on to NBME 25 through 31, you can do three days where for each of these three days, you're going to redo uh, the NBMEs 20 through 24 and free 120 back to back. So, okay, so for example, you finish free 120 and all the Anki. The next day, you're going to do forms 20 and 21, all 400 questions as though you've never done them back to back, no Anki. 
day after that, you're going to do 22 and 23, all 400 questions back to back as though you've never done them. No Anki. The third day, you're going to do uh, NBME uh, 24, okay? Uh, with free 120, all 320 questions back to back as though you've never done them. No Anki. And then you're going to go on to 25 through 31 with Anki. So that's like a good way to do your final month. That's one example, okay? I would say I meet with people to discuss these plans. Um, that's the most, uh, but I'm, I'm kind of rewarding you guys. If you could follow what I was saying quickly there, I'm rewarding you guys for being here in the live chat with giving you a very detailed descriptor of how I could go about the, the final month there. Um, Doc AV says when to read your high yield. And the answer is throughout the, throughout your prep. So you're going to be doing QBank, obviously, um, leading in the months leading up. And you're going to, I've talked about how minimum 40, 80 questions per day. Minimum 40 per day, maximum 80 per day. So for example, you can do 40 questions in the morning, have lunch break, and then you can do my PDFs in the afternoon slash evening. If you're on a day where you just, you can't sit and read my stuff, you're like, no, I'm gonna get ADHD, trying to sit and read PDF right now, you can do more questions, 80 that day, okay? So always 40 in the morning and the afternoon, you can say, I'm gonna do your PDFs uh, or I'm gonna do more questions. And I said to do, I said to go through QBank random untimed tutor and then, but you say, let's say you got a quiz in renal in school in two weeks from now, and you want to boost your renal though, or you feel shitty at immuno and you want to boost your immuno. But I told you, Mike said, do QBank untimed tutor random mode. Well, what you're going to do is after you finish your morning of untimed tutor random 40 questions and you have lunch, your evening could be, your afternoon evening could be, well, now you're going to do my fucking renal PDF for let's say three hours. Then you're going to do... Uh, my renal YouTube MCQ playlist for three hours. So your afternoon evening can be your subject specific prep simultaneous to while you're going through every day, uh, untimed tutor random for your QBank. In situations where students are failing, okay, if they're in school and they're like, you know, their actual coursework, like they need to pass school or they're going to uh, be kicked out, I could say, well, look, you got your cardio quiz in a week and a half. We're just going to boost all your car. We're going to, we'll go through subject specific and QBank, but I don't want to do that. Okay. For actual USMLE, I don't like doing that, but for students who are going to fail actual school unrelated to USMLE, sometimes I can have them go through subject specific and QBank. Uh, Ibadot Singh says, hi, left 20 days for step two. You have 20 days left for step two, how to revise, how to improve scores. Uh, 20 days, not a lot of time. I would make sure you know all the clinical mastery series forms. I've said that 20 days. It's like just enough time to like study quite a bit, but not enough time to do anything like fully. Um, the clinical mastery series forms are going to take you uh, three to three and a half weeks, but I would say you need to know NBME six through 13 very fucking well prior to your step two. And I would say know the internal medicine, all eight of those CMS forms really well, all eight surgery forms really well know the three family medicine forms really well. Okay. Obviously there's like psych, et cetera, but you got to know I am, you got to know surgery, you got to know family medicine. And then I would do peds as your priority immediately after that. Um, Asad Ali Ahmed Kasim says, bro, bro. I love how you talk. Asad says just took step one pending. My results are pending. Want to get done with step two before September 20th. Uh, so quite a bit of time. Want to apply this here. Any advice? Yes. You're going to, um, Ideally, you're going to go through all of, for step two, you're going to go through all of QBank and Boss U World. Then you're going to do the clinical master series forms, all 45 to 50, which will take you three to three and a half weeks. Then you're going to do MBME six through eight offline. It'll take you six days, two days to perform. Then you're going to do a double pass of all the CMS forms, another three to three and a half weeks. Then you're going to do free 120. Then you're going to do nine through 13. That's how I want you prepping for step two. If you are on a, a strict time constraint and you need to curtail that path, then you could, that time is going to be uh, you will subtract QBank. That's what we're going to do. Okay. So you might only do two thirds of QBank. I'm not compromising two passes of the CMS forms. I never compromise on the CMS or the NBMEs. Uh, Vakia says got around 70% NBME six for step two CK. Is that passing level? Um, I would convert that. That doesn't sound bad. That sounds like pretty decent. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to type into Google, uh, NBME six score conversion, Reddit. And you'll get graphs where you can type your number of wrongs into the X, into the equation they give you for X. And then Y will be your three digit score. And 214 is passed for 2CK. So obviously you want a buffer of like 220 plus. That'd be nice. The The conversion for MBME 6, for whatever reason, tends to be pretty dodgy. Um, so I would definitely sit set. If your score comes out like a bit whack for that, uh, I would sit MBME 7 
okay, as well. And then you'll use the score conversion for that. But 78 on the surface looks pretty good. For those of you starting for step one, 78 would be absurdly high. Uh, for step two, like the scales are different, okay? So uh, Prachi Patel says, I'm getting around 225 in my NBME for TCK. I gave NBME 11. Uh, how can I get increased my score, yo, maximum in in next five to six weeks? Uh, you need to go through all the clinical maths. You're going to take a step back from... Uh, you're not going to touch 12 and 13 Prachi. You're going to do all the clinical master series forms as, the, as they, and you say, well, I've looked at them or whatever. You're going to do all of them again. Okay. Three to three and a half weeks of all the cl clinical master series forms, uh, two per day, ideally no more than two per day. And then you're going to go and you can touch and I could potentially have actually before you touch 12 and 13, after you finish all the CMS forms, I want you doing uh, six through eight and nine and 10 and free 120 again, as though you've never done them. Okay, so we're not going to worry about your scores on those because you've presumably done them already. So all the CMS, then you're going to redo 6 through 10 and free 120 as though you've never done them. Maybe you'll get 85% because you've done them before. I don't care. So you're going to review all those forms again. Then you're going to review 11 again. Holy shit, that you just fucking sat. Then you're going to do MVM 12 and your score is going to be higher in MVM 12. So Allah Al Lobby says, hey, Mike, is 236 score and 2CK good enough to match IM? Absolutely. All you have to do to match IM is to pass, okay? You can pass uh, for IM, FM, surge, uh, PEDS, OBSGYN, psych. You, all you need is pass. 236 is solid. Hi, Dr. Mike. Uh, ES, hi, Dr. Mike. May I ask how were you able to collaborate <laughs> for first aid for step one? I, I was an author for first aid 2014 editor for first aid 2015. I was active on a forum that doesn't exist anymore. I don't want to give them oxygen because they're assholes, but uh, I was uh, active on a forum like many years ago and first aid actually found me at the time. And I had interviewed with Tao and yeah, they just took me on and then I worked for him for two years. I don't want to talk about me right now. It's about you guys. Okay. That's the purpose of this Q and a, uh, we can talk about me later. Um, but basically I could have continued with them as and become senior editor, but I had to sign non-competition agreements, which would have meant that I couldn't produce my own content for many years after the fact, and, and that was a deal breaker for me. Um, Young Myungian Co says, limited time for dedicated. I'm at 70% done with step two world during clinical rotations. 70% done with step two world during clinical rotations. Would I be okay just finishing the rest and doing incorrects? I could do only two or three NBMEs. I um, mean, for 240, no, you could, what do you mean? You could only do two to three MVMEs. That's not true. You're going to do MVMEs six through 13. You're going to do all of them and you're going to do free 120. You're not going to forego in the, any of the NBME exams. That's not, that's not going to happen. Your situation, when you say you're on clinical rotations, I'd want to know more information because like, are you doing subject specific right now? Like what's going on in your situation? So like, there's more to talk about on that front. Um, Django says, Hey Mike, first odd question I have is I'm 20. And you're in third year, not from the U.S. And I feel like it sounds like you're maybe Australia or something because uh, they like start med school and they're fucking like 17 in Australia. I literally rocked up in Australia and there were like people who were like like 18 in my fucking med school class. It was like fucking whack. And they like they got like higher grades than like the fucking internationals too. And I feel like uh, I'm not fully aware of what I got myself into. Any thoughts? Um, you're fucking 20, dude. Life could be like life, like for you guys watching this, couldn't life be worse than like being 20 years old in third year med? And you're like, OMG, what do I do with my life? You'll get your fucking medical degree, Django. You'll be a fucking doctor when you're like 21, 22. And then I think like, you know, you have plenty of time to figure out how you want to maneuver. You can make some cash, right? Chicks like cash. So you can be a doctor at fucking like 22 with some cash. And then like you'll, That'll be, that'll be positive for aspects outside of medicine for you. He's, and then you can decide what you're passionate about if you want to like do other things. Isra NM says, should I do UWorld uh, two rounds random, a second round random? I did UWorld system uh, for my first round. My exam is in August until now. I don't finish. Your, your exam's in August. So what I, if, I'd want to know when in August. Uh, but I would say a month leading up to your exam, you got to switch in the MME. So for example, if you're, if your uh, step one is going to be August 15th, I want you to start your final review. I want you to hit, I want you to do NBME 20, let's say on July 11th. And I want you to do, uh, as I already talked about earlier in this live stream, I want you to go through 20 through 31, free 120, starting around July 11th. If your um, exam is August 15th. And so between now, June uh, 10th here in Japan, but June 9th for you guys, 
Uh, so between June 9th and July 11th, I want you just doing more QBank and my PDFs, my YouTube MCQs. That's a good time frame for you. Uh, John Bashara says, hey, I'm getting 60% in your world blocks. That's good. An exam is July 31st. Uh, can I make it 65% past? I don't want you touching UWorld after um, June 27th. So you've got like maybe, John, you've got maybe two to two and a half weeks more of UWorld, and I want you switching into the NBME exams. Uh, Rafi Hassan says, hey, uh, how can I rely, or sorry, how can I review my UWorld explanations efficiently? I feel like I don't remember the explanations being correct. So you're not going to remember jack fucking shit. That's okay. You can just read. I don't want you making Anki. I don't want you annotating. Currently, I'm doing system-wise as I haven't gone through the entire systemic review. You, I don't just, the way you're going to get through UWorld explanations efficiently is literally just reading and being okay with uh, forgetting stuff. You're just going to forget. Okay. So that's totally okay. Uh, I'm okay with you. Uh, feeling like you're not remembering anything. So just um, just read. I just want you to get your quota done. I, I'm articulating this because it is very common for students not to make progress through QBank because they're constantly trying to convert everything into an Anki card or they're trying to annotate. I don't want you doing that. Just, just read, get through the quota of 40 minimum to 80 maximum questions per day. I don't really give a fuck what you do. I've said doing blocks of 10 though can help. Okay, those of there's maybe some of you watching this who see my videos on doing blocks of ten in New World. Uh, that's very efficient for uh, getting you through the the cubing. Dima says, "Are you are you Russian, Dima?" Dima says, "Strategy for the exam." I knew a Russian dude when I was in middle school. His name was Dima, and he was really good at arm wrestling. Uh, like he didn't even look that strong, but he was like fucking ch like a beast at arm wrestling. Uh, Dima says, "Strategy for the exam day: timing of breaks, type of food." Uh, cheat sheet okay so uh, yeah i've made videos on this so the first of all uh you're not going to be writing anything on the laminated sheet of paper some people are like you know omg do i need to write like formulae for biostats on that laminated sheet the answer is no if you're considering doing that if your retention such knowledge of the equations is so tenuous that you feel the need to write stuff on the laminated sheet you're not ready to sit this isn't like some undergrad biochemistry exam that you're pulling an all-nighter for it's the US simile so there's no cheat sheet type of nonsense absolute garbage okay and then timing of breaks uh yes so what you're going to do is you're going to do the if possible you're going to do the first two blocks back to back with no break you're going to sit at your desk for 60 seconds without leaving the testing room so you're going to do the first block if it's not traumatic okay if you got through the first block okay you're feeling all right your caffeine level's okay you're just gonna you finish the first block you're sitting at your desk and you're just going to take 60 seconds. You just feel like, okay, all right, I feel okay. And then here we go into the second block. And you just go, boom, two blocks back to back with no break. And you're already going to be about a quarter of the way done through the exam. Very good momentum. Then after that, just five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, all the way through. You're not going to take an extended lunch break. You're not going to have uh, any, you're not going to load calories in any one break. You're just going to have like after your second block, when you take your first break, you're going to have half a protein bar, or granola bar, a few sips of water after the third block. You're going to have another half of a protein or granola bar, a few sips of water. After the fourth, fifth, sixth blocks, et cetera, uh, you can have some, yeah, have some caffeine. Okay, keep your caffeine. Even if you don't drink caffeine, I would still recommend caffeine because it's good to be hypercharged during the USMLE, okay? Uh, it's good to be as sharp as a whip. Okay, uh, during the exam, even if you have like a bit of an atrial flutter as a result, there's no room for being tired while you're in the medical icing exam. So, uh, Django, let's see. Uh, David says, no, no, I lost it. Arsene says, would you do the incorrect screenshots of the CMS forms or step two enemies? Uh, no, you don't have to do incorrects. Uh, you don't have to screenshot incorrects from the CMS forms. You don't have to do that. It's a good question. Step two enemies. I often don't have students do that. It, sometimes, but not often. Uh, I tend to have students do that for step one. Okay, it's a that's more of just a subjectivity um, because most of the students I have, I'd say at least eighty percent of my students are for step one are just praying to pass and getting them to memorize the NBMEs gets them to pass. Same as comp. Okay, it's going to get you to, if you're studying for comp CBSE. If you memorize twenty through thirty, that's how you're going to pass uh, for step two. There's copious CMS content that I'm having you do twice. Uh, and so that tends to be sufficient, uh, the two passes of all those CMS forms. So you're talking like 2,000 to 2,500 questions from the CMS forms twice. A lot of fucking questions, okay? And so that tends to get scores up enough on the NBME exams. Uh, 
I tend not to have students make Anki for 2CK in short, but uh, I've done it before. David uh, Baba Tomiwa says, did I meet me 26 at 67%? Is that safe? That's borderline, but it's not bad. Been getting between 67 and 72 for NBME, so that's 72. Obviously, that's good. Um, yeah, those aren't bad scores. Django said, I'd want you to convert those to three-digit scores, though, using Reddit scale. So you're going to type in a Google uh, Images, Google Images, OK? You're going to type in, like, NBME 27 score conversion Reddit, NBME 29 score conversion Reddit, and you're going to plug your number of wrongs, get your three-digit score. 197 is internal pass, and I want you getting a 205 to 210 plus on those forms. Uh, at least three of them. And you say, well, why do I need to cumbersomely convert percentages into a three-digit score? Why not just like, why can't you just look at my like two-digit percentages and say, is that good enough? It's because the scales differ per form. So maybe a 67 on one form, not the same as 67 on another form. So Django says, have you always wanted to move to Japan? The answer is no. I was living in Australia. I was fourth year med. I visited for three days over New Year's 2015, 2016 with my ex-girlfriend at the time. And I was just like done. I'm moving here. Uh, but I thought about like Korea, China, stuff like that. Uh, we'll talk about me, but I just want to answer you guys. Uh, you have some really questions right now. SM Fahim says, SM Fahim Hassan says, I have a, a weak base. That's like a good, like kind of like a pun, right? Like you're saying your bases are weak. OMG, haha. I have a weak base. Uh, do I need to go through FA? Or, dude, bro, don't ask me trolling fucking questions right now. Do I need to go through FA or boards and beyond videos or should I go straight to UWorld? It's laughable, bro. Laughable. Okay. Nah, you're just going to go straight to UWorld, dude. Um, and you're going to do my PDFs, my YouTube MCQs. That's what you got to do right now. None of these cuck resources. Like, don't ask cuck questions like that. A war hero from the past says, do you work as a doctor? No, I work doing this when I have no interest in working as a practicing doctor. Ascha Abbas says, you world step two is destroying me, man. I got 240 on maybe nine to get a baseline. <laughs> 240 solid, dude. It's trolling. I know you want, I know there's those of you here who want like 270 or something, but like uh, a lot of you are just trying to pass, I know. So you world step two is destroying me. I got 240 on maybe nine. I had to augment. Have you gone through my PDFs? Have you gone through my YouTube MCQ playlist? That would help you augment so do that if students like no i haven't i haven't done your pdfs or no i haven't uh done your youtube then it's like well no fucking shit your scores haven't augmented so you're gonna do the cardio palm renal gastro i really want to go through those four ps for step one and step two and i i uh i make it clear i explicate within those pdfs if there's something that's specifically step one or step two because some of you like freak the fuck out about like is this a step one or step two pdf relax okay so I'll, i make it clear in the pdfs so um steven schmidt i lost your fucking comment steven schmidt let me scroll back up right now sometimes when people post stuff it just moves the fucking chat down on me steven schmidt uh steven shite uh says how many questions do you think are in the step one pool over ten thousand. by the way you are the man taking step one tomorrow good luck steven good luck dude you'll do well tomorrow no fucking um don't do any warm up questions the morning of. Just have if you're uh, if there's like a you know family member, or someone who's driving you to the testing center, have a conversation with them while you're going there, so you'll wake yourself up. You know, so you're not in like the Monday morning, like on the subway, quiet headspace. You want to be in like you know kind of an active mindset. And you said your step one's tomorrow, so it's 4:08 a.m. here in Japan. So I'm assuming it's like three, it's 3:10 p.m. on the East Coast in the U.S. Uh, just after noon on the West Coast in the U.S. So you guys, um, yeah, so Stephen, tonight, because it's the night, it's the day before your step one, I don't want you studying past dinner. I, want, I don't want you studying past like 4 p.m. You're going to have a chill rest of the day. If you're looking at notes, I don't want you studying past 4 p.m. Uh, I want you just having literally a chill evening. You're going to like go to the gym, watch a movie, literally watch like a happy movie. Okay, I watched Shawshank Redemption the night before my step one. I had a couple slices of pizza, I had two cups of chamomile tea with milk and honey. Uh, it's very like, you know, type of like cloying type stuff, but it's like, you got to have a chill evening. A says, stop the FA, cut questions, do the high yield mailing PDFs. Good. Very fucking solid. Excellent advice from chat. I appreciate that. A, that was very solid uh, advice to whomever asked that cuck question. I agree with that. Uh, Chiara, I'm assuming Chiara, are you Italian? Uh, Chiara just says, what for? I don't know what you're asking. Passionately doctor says 11 days for step, 11 days left for step one, but then me, UWSA, 50% average. What to do now? Dude, 11 days. No, actually you're female in your thumbnail. Uh, passionately doctor, you're going to 
just focus on NBMEs in the final 11 days. 25 through 31 is your priority right now. There's a lot I would chat with you about, but you got to focus on 25 through 31. Your world has no fucking role right now for you. Uh, Kiata uh, Mims says, what NBME forms should I focus on? I'm a month out. I already talked about this. You're going to do 23. Uh, if you're a month out. So right now is June 9th for most of you. So unless there's those of you who are literally fucking overnight, I doubt it. Uh, it's June 10th for me in Japan. But the point is June 9th for most of you. Um, if you're a month out, then I want you starting the NBME is basically a month and four days uh, out from your exam. That's what I want. And you're just, and you can work in my PDFs in your spare time. Not no QBank at this point in the final month and four days. Uh, Migs says, finished you world about to finish neuro. My exam is in two months. Should I do NBMEs 20 through 30 once I'm done with review? I don't want you touching the NBMEs until the final uh, month and four days, as I said. And then, but if we, sometimes if, if, a, if a student needs a, a score, like we need a baseline, I could, you could sit NBME 20. Like if it's a situation where you really need to know where you're sitting, um, I can generally gauge that by QBank. Like if you're going through QBank and you're getting like 55% or like 65%, I can generally say like 55 is like too low. Uh, 60s is good as an example. So like, but if you, um, if you really need a baseline score, you can sit NBME 20 further out from your exam. But for the most part, uh, I don't want people touching NBMEs. Like if you're going through QBank, um, I just want you to keep doing that. And I don't want you touching NBMEs until a month and four days out. You can sit NBME 20. And if you do shitty on the NBMEs, by all means, you can postpone. Uh, Doc AV says, how much time is enough for step one with FA, UWorld, and your vid? Step one, I'd say you need about three months. So you need a month for the NBMEs, two months for QBank, I'd say. People obviously go through QBank different speeds, but I'd say that's like generally fine if you can just study full time for USMLA. Um, Demi three on T says thoughts on how to prepare for CBSE have until July 13th. Um, that's a longer discussion because I would want to know, yeah, we need you to sit the NBME exams 20 through 31. If your scores are really fucking low, if you're tanking the NBMEs when you sit, when you start doing them, I don't want you wasting 22 through 31. Okay. You just do 2021. 20, if you, if you tank 20 and 21, you're going to have to go back to QBank. Okay, but I want you doing MBMEs 20 through 31 prior to CBSC. And then once you pass CBSC, you're good to go for step one. This is a, it, it becomes more complicated now that you've got SGE, you've got AUA, and I think AEC as well. Uh, you guys are having like internal exams not administered by NBME anymore. So like that's going to be, that's going to be pretty annoying as far as um, like preparedness. Like normally if your exam, if your comp is administered by NBME, and you pass it, then you we know you're good to go for step one. But like AUA, for example, you got your fucking like internal uh, professors writing questions, which means that if you pass your comp, you're not necessarily ready for step one. So, um, but as long as you get objectively good scores on, on the NBME exams, we know you're ready to sit the USMLE irrespective of your comp scores. Um, let's see. Muskin asks, are your PDF... Are your PDFs enough to answer UWorld QBank for step one? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I'm, I don't care about my, are my PDFs enough to answer UWorld QBank? That's not the right question. The right question is, are my PDFs enough to answer the NBME questions, which is the US simulator? The answer is yes. I don't give a fuck if you're getting questions wrong in, like, UWorld or AMBOSS, because those aren't those questions aren't the real exam. Uh, Malin John says, my step one is in three days, scoring 68% and Mimi's. How to how to plan the next uh, weeks and maybe 2023 20, done. Step step one is in three weeks. Yeah, for step one's in three weeks, 68%. You just have to do nothing but NBMEs. Yes, 24, then free 120, and then 25 through 31. And you got to do my PDFs. Make sure you know high yield arrows very fucking well. Charlie Adams, what if you want to specialize later in cardio or GI? Is all you have to do is pass for step two? Are you are you talking about like internal medicine or something? Uh, yes, all you have to do is pass step two for internal medicine. Helios 311 says, hey, Mike, I take step one on Monday, uh, 68% and maybe 27. Two weeks ago, 58% and maybe 28. Uh, Saturday, 68%, 31 on Sunday. Should I be concerned about that score drop even though your scores didn't drop, they're random. So if you fucking, for example, rather than doing like 
six, uh, rather than getting your NBME 27, 68% two weeks ago, and then a 58% NBME 28 on Saturday, if you just coincidentally sat NBME 28 two weeks ago, and you got, you would have had a 58%, and then you would have been like, wow, I jumped up and NBME 27, like, you know, Saturday, like, it's really random. Most of that is just how the questions are allotted uh, between the forms. People flip out about like whether they're dropping in scores, they're not, but it shows you what's possible on the real USMLA, you know, because like you can go in, like, obviously, it's a pass fail step one, but it shows you what's possible on, on like step two, is that you can get you can take in the where you get like a two, you know, 20. And then you have some that are like in the 230s, you got like a 250. And then the student gets like a 222 as their real score, and they're all depressed. And it's like, well, you can jump around like that. And your NBME show it's possible. It is possible, right? To have that that range of scores that you get in the MMEs can reflect what you're really capable of. So um, you got to know high yield arrows, Helios. That's tangible advice for you. If you're if you're watching this, your NBME suck, you got to know high yield arrows, PDF. Speedy Cuts says 10 days till CBSE. How to schedule my time and study plan effectively for these 10 days. Um, that's a long discussion as well because... I'd want to know how you're performing on the NBMEs. Um, so if you're tanking the NBMEs, I'm not even going to have, have you, if you're in a position to fail CBSC, which I see a lot of students are, then I wouldn't even have you waste NBMEs. If you're passing uh, your NBMEs at the moment, uh, I would make sure you know 20 through 24 uh, prior to your CBSC. Most students haven't touched those. Like most students I encounter who like, if you just came to me right now and we're talking about CBSC, you're 10 days from now, I'd be like, have you done 20 through 24 offline? You're like, no. And I'm like, do those. We're going to do those first logically before we touch more of the 25 to 30 on 31 online forms. So uh, Lalo Akko says, I wish I could stay for longer. I just tune in to say hi. Wish me luck on tomorrow's exam. Love you, man. Probably already long gone. Well, uh, yeah, good luck on tomorrow's exam. Shabo Sheik says 75% on 120 while I passed up one. It's not a bad score. Uh, minimum two thirds. I think that's like, it's, it's not bad. I think that's a pass if we just talk about free 120 alone, but, um, for, I'd still want your NBME scores, obviously. Uh, I would never have a student just sit on free 120 alone. Like I'd want your NBME scores. Ostrad Abba says, yeah, we start med school. At nineteen in Pak at nineteen years old in Pakistan, sometimes eight, eighteen. Yeah, as I said in Australia, you had like some kids fucking starting at like eighteen. All right, uh, like they get into med school, like they finish high school at seventeen, and they start like a six year medical program where they do like two years undergrad, and they like start either like eighteen, like eighteen, nineteen. Um, hi, Mike Mask. Do you have PDF for ENT and? ENT, I cover some of that. I cover a lot of ENT, I think, in the the pulmonary. No, in the gastro. Pulmonary and gastro, I cover ENT. Ophthalmology, I didn't make a PDF on that yet. I can make a PDF on that, but I yeah, I haven't gone there yet. Um, there's just other things you guys have been pressing me on, but I will go there eventually. Shannon C says, hi, Mike, or TSC says, uh, hi, Mike. Been scoring low the past week on MME, 56%, MME 29, 64% MME 31. Uh, exam on Tuesday. Can't postpone uh, tips for three days. Uh, I would postpone. If you literally can't postpone, uh, you only have three fucking days. Uh, high yield arrows. Uh, S. Beta says, why don't you become a crazy good doctor with all the information you have rather than teach you a simile? Why would I rather be a, a dumb fucking like piece of shit cuck? beta doctor uh like why would i want to do that i'd rather do my own thing and teach you a simile uh that's what i prefer to do e dr mike says could you give me advice to score high on the audacity of that question i find that like uh, it's audacious uh e dr mike says could you give me advice to score high on step three yeah you're gonna prep for that as exactly as you are for step two so you're gonna do uh the cms forms it's a long discussion, step three, of course. You're literally going to do the 2CK, all the NBMEs for 2CK, so 6 through 13, free 120. And you're going to do, for 2CK, all the CMS forms for 2CK. And you're going to do uh, the single NBME for step three. You're going to do the 1,900 questions in UWorld for step three. You're going to do CCS cases, clearly, for step three. Uh, but you're going to, the I'd say your major trick or hack that you probably weren't aware of is that you need to go through all this, the 2CK material again, okay? All the CMS forms, all those NBMEs for, for, that you did for step two, you're going to do all that for step three, 
Okay. So Lord Solo. Hey, Lords, how's it going? Uh, and you're a member of my channel. You're in a special green highlighted and I see your icon there. I know your name. I've seen you there. You are the best. Love you. Love you too. Isra NM says, how many hours should I study in the last two months before step one? Eight hours a day minimum. Muhammad al Khaldi says, hey, you said you can match an IM easily as long as you pass step two. That's true. Is this true for IMGs? The answer is yes. If so, why is it only 60% of IMG applicants match? Because people are entitled. That's why. It's because if you pass, you can't just have the, like, the audacity to think that you're going to go to like uh massachusetts general hospital like you got to apply to fucking like mississippi and like you know alabama not that there's anything wrong i'm i'd rather probably go to i'd rather be in alabama truthfully than like in fucking boston at this point we had this on like the first live stream good barbecue in alabama you guys are talking uh i think uh chick named zara had mentioned that there's good uh barbecue in alabama so that's like i'd rather go there but uh, my point is you you have to apply in a transitional years and preliminary years they're one year uh programs not just for your categorical programs the way people don't match is if you only apply in a four-year categorical programs in locations you want so so let's say for example you scored decently on usmle and you want dermatology and you're going to apply in only four-year dermatology programs at like your fucking top institutions. You're like, I want fucking Stanford. I want fucking like Mount Sinai. You like put all these like high, these like upper mid tier institutions there. But meanwhile, you don't apply to any cat, uh, any uh, preliminary or transitional years. Okay. So it's not smart. So you got to have a safety net and you'll match in a, let's say a one year uh, intern year somewhere. And that's perfectly fine. And then you just reapply the next year in a categorical. But that's how people don't match is they don't apply to prelim and uh, transitional years. You got to do that. So uh, Semsem says, if I, Semsem, Semsem, okay, uh, says, if I give 78, per, 78 plus percent in two NBMEs, should I solve all or can I take the exam in one week? I'm assuming you're talking about step one. Uh, that's extremely high. So you can just sit. Staying for step two, I mean, I want to know the three-digit scores, but I want you doing all the NBMEs, preferably before you sit, uh, regardless of your scores. Uh, I lost where I was in the chat. Let's see. I'm scrolling up right now. Uh, Diddy says, hey, hi, Mike. Uh, my step one is August 30th. Okay. I'm done with 60% of you world. When should I uh, sit NBMEs? Uh, so your step one is August 30th. So you're going to start your NBME. I want you to start your NBMEs. If your step one's August 30th, I want you starting your NBMEs on uh, July 27th. And you're going to do QBank between now. You're going to, between now and July 27th, you're going to do the rest of QBank. You're, oh, your schedule is so easy, uh, Diddy. Uh, you're going to do, so this is what you're going to do. You're going to start your NBMEs July 27th for your August 30th exam. So between now, June 9th, and July 27th, you're going to say, I have X number of questions left in New World. How many questions do I have to get done per day to finish all the QBank by July 27th? That's going to be the number of questions you do in the morning, generally. If it's like, you know, I 40 to 50-ish, I want you to get those done in the morning. You're going to have lunch. Then you're going to do PDFs, my YouTube questions, the rest of the day. Very easy, clean schedule. Uh, Shaban Jehan says, Path both, passed both step exams. Step two CK is 215, USA IMG. Pass mark is 214, by the way, for someone who's studying for step one. 214 for step two is Shaban, you got 215. USA IMG, will I match? Uh, what should I aim for, family medicine? Yeah, you'll match. I know, like, you obviously want a higher score. You'll match. You'll, you'll match. Um, yeah, just as I already said, you apply IM, FM, uh, PEDS, OBGYN, psych, but just apply into one year programs as well. Don't be entitled. Apply to South Dakota, apply to fucking, you know, Kentucky. Seriously, not the, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with these places. I'd fucking, I'd prefer to be in like one of these places. But these are places that like people don't, uh, you know, they underestimate, okay? Like you, you can match, you just have to not have fucking entitlement, okay? Like you're not going to fucking like Duke, all right? Like with your 215, like you're, you gotta, you gotta apply broadly. So Dima says, I'm Ukrainian currently in Israel. That's pretty sweet, Dima. Uh, did you have a shawarma today? No, it's too early in the day. Maybe you'll, no, it's not. Are you going to have a shawarma 
for dinner or a falafel. If I were in Israel, I'd have shawarma a lot. Charlie Adams says, uh, what should be my strategy for step two writing on June 24th in two weeks from now? I'm 40%, 47% of the way through second pass, average U world averaging 68%. Took in, took in me form nine last week at 224. If you're not able to move your exam right now, dude, you're undercutting yourself so much right now. You have no fucking idea. Um, I don't want you sitting June 24th, Charlie Adams. Like you need to finish fucking New World. Finish Q you're telling me you're 40 47% of the way through QBank, averaging 60%. You need to finish all of QBank, do a full pass of all the CMS forms, okay? Three to three and a half weeks and give me six through eight. Double pass of all the CMS forms, free 129 through 13. And that's how you're going to get a high score. If you say, though, no, 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 you don't understand. I have to sit June 24th. That's it. I can't move my exam. You're undercutting yourself. You're scoring like 30 points lower than you should. Um, step two is your whole application. Like, I don't know why you'd shortchange yourself. So Anjali Goel says, writing the exam July 5th, currently gone through 20% of U World and going over your PDFs and, I, and have got MBME 31, 58%. Uh, and maybe 26 61 percent so those are fails recommendations improve uh no 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 you you're not sitting july 5th sorry sorry to rain on your parade anjali goel you're not sitting july 5th you're gonna um you're gonna sit in august maybe so what you're gonna do is you got to get through the rest of qbank right now and you got to do the rest of U world and then you're gonna after you finish U world so we'd say I think it's like 3,700 questions in UWorld. Uh, and you said you've done 20, so 740 ballpark. Um, all right, under 3,000 questions left. And so 40 per day, 75 days. Um, yeah, I mean, basically, you're, you're going to need some more time on QBank. I'd say at least through July on QBank. And then another month for the NBME exams. Uh, you're going to sit end of August. Uh, you're not going to be sitting July 5th, okay? Uh, so when you come out of QBank, when you finish uh, UWorld, I want you to do uh, NBME 20, and we'll see if you can break um, 60s on NBME 20, 60s percent on NBME 20, and then you can move to NBME 21, see if you can break 60s. Your path, I would have like a more of a lengthy discussion with you, and come up with a very specific day-by-day -day plan for you. That's what I tend to do for students over Skype. Lorenzo Carnio, MD, any advice for step three? Welcome back, Lorenzo. Good to see you again. I think you sent me some messages on Telegram and then you got salty when I didn't respond right away. But I was like, people, I'm just joking, Lorenzo. You're my man. So any advice for step three? I talked about this already. You're going to do all the CMS forms, same as step two. And then you're going to uh, also do all the step two NBMEs again. But it's good to see you studying for uh, step three at this point. And start the CCS cases early. Okay. Edgardo Torres says, should I count the CMS forms I do during rotations as prep um, per step, or should I do the two rounds of CMS? No, no, no. You're, you, you do count them as one pass. And then during dedicated, you're going to do another pass full of CMS forms. Good question, Edgardo. Edgardo. Straw Hat Fluffy 3 says, how near the exam date can I get a Prometric Center pro, uh, mock exam? Like when a practice exam, like when should I decide? To, you don't have to. Uh, are you asking about a practice exam right now? I don't know. I don't know what your question is. I don't recommend doing like a Prometric practice exam. You don't have to do that. Students who like, uh, who do the Prometric like mock exams or practice exams, um, it's because they just have like nerves that they don't, things aren't going to go well or something, but you don't have to do practice exams. Arsene says, thank you for your answer. I don't drink coffee. It makes me go to the bathroom too. Uh, people are full of shit. Like you need to like relax. I found that green tea or dark chocolate. People, I mean, like, if you drink a fucking liquid, you're going to have to go to the bathroom. People are like, oh, like caffeine, it's a natural diuretic, it makes you go to the bathroom. It doesn't fucking make you go to the bathroom. If I drink, like, a big fucking venti from Starbucks and then I have to go to the bathroom, it's not because I fucking drank coffee. It's because I drank a fucking 20 ounce beverage. It's fucking, like, I drink a water, you're going to have to go to the bathroom the same way. So don't give me this nonsense about, like, you have to go to the bathroom if you drink coffee. Uh, Lorenzo MD again. Also, have you have you heard OME is no longer free? Charges a fortune too. I haven't heard that. Straw Hat Fluffy. How long will your PDFs take to go through? It's highly variable. Some people are very fast. Some people are slow. I mean, it can take a long time to go through my PDFs. 
Jay Moore says, hey, Mike, love the content. Exam on, yeah, it's like your fucking complicated question here. Exam on July 7th, 64% through UWorld. Uh, NBME scores, are you step one or step two right now? Okay, okay. NBME scores on NBME 25, 28, 68, 77, 80. That's a troll. Guys, you guys watching this right now? Most of you just trying to pass or many of you just trying to pass and lost your fucking question. God damn it. No, I don't want to pin that comment. Okay. Um, and let me find your fucking comment. Okay, Jay Moore. Um, 68, 77, 77, 80 percent correct on NBMEs for step one. And you're and you're wondering if your like scores are good. Um, should you finish the NBMEs? Yes, you have to finish the NBMEs. People would pray for those scores, like would love those fucking scores. Like, hey, yes, you're going to do all the MMEs 20 through 31. Zarok Ikram says, how much time should we spend doing UWorld questions in a day? The morning, 40 questions, uh, your minimum you're going to do in the morning. I'd say, like, it can take you four hours to do four, 40 questions, I'd say. Uh, Sub E says, is UWSA2 predictive of the real score? Like people often say, yeah, it's predictive, but I prefer the NBMEs, not the UWSAs. I've said that. Sorry if you've answered this already. I left in between. No, it's fine. Zarok says, Ikram, is it okay if I do only 10 questions per day? No, it's not okay. I'm serious. You're going to do 40 questions per day, bare fucking minimum. I don't care how busy you are. 80 questions max, 40 questions minimum uh, in QInc. Vishnu says, last two days before step one, done with all the NBMEs, what else should I look at? High yield arrows. Uh, Ume K. Abbas says, my biostats and genetics are weak. How to improve? I have biostats and genetics PDF. My genetics PDF, fucking ace. Okay, if you guys are watching this, you haven't done my genetics PDF, you're fucking stupid. Okay, it's going to help you with all that Hardy Weinberg, like annoying fucking shit. Okay, genetics PDF is ace, my free stuff tab. Uh, music for all says step one in 11 days, and give me scores in 57, 59. Should you postpone? Absolutely, yes. You need to postpone. Okay, it's not a question. Uh, foodies World High. Eleni. Uh, Eleni Mimani says, how long do you need to study for step two for, for dermatology? Four months. Abai Nair says, hi, Mike. Just want to say thank you for all the PDFs in the audio cubing. Took me to new levels. Uh, you're welcome. No, but thank you, Abai. Uh, Nagin Namavari says, what is CBSC? It's the comp exam. Some schools like Caribbean have uh, exams that the, the school requires them to sort of practice uh, version of the step prior. Melman is daddy says, how am I supposed to remember everything from your world? How does it automatically get incorporated with the deal? You're not supposed to remember everything from your world, nor should you. Okay. You're just going to read the explanations and be okay with forgetting things. I've said, don't do Anki. Uh, don't annotate. Marco Antonio Montoya says I'm doing UW uh, cues. And for example, I find a question about heart failure and then I have to review that topic. So how will I know which question your PDF are from that topic? Thanks for everything. Well, I talk about you're doing a question on heart failure and you literally control F search heart failure in my PDF for cardio, you'll see that. So I have like all that stuff there. Nis Nassar Ahmed says best resource for OBGYN. I mean, I have an OBGYN PDF. Uh, I've got my YouTube MCQs OBGYN and then you've got Q, uh, QBank. So you world and boss questions. If you're on an ex I talked about this in the last live stream. If you have a, an extended OBGYN clerkship, like 12 weeks, some schools actually have that. And you're like, you need to do a lot of OBGYN, holy shit. There's a there's a special OBGYN only Q bank called UWISE, not UWorld, UWISE, U-W-I-S-E, uh, that is only OBGYN questions. So for people who have like, for whatever fucking reason, their school makes them do like a 12 week OBGYN clerkship, uh, I will sometimes have them uh, go through UWISE, Okay, not you world, you wise uh, Q bank. That's like a boost if you want extra questions for OBGYN. Okay. Um, Negan says, Should I do any of the NBMEs before 20? Uh, you don't have to. The only time I have people do NBMEs prior to form 20 is if uh, they've literally ex they've set comp CBSC step one, they failed, for instance, and they've already exhausted 20 through 31 free 120. Okay, if it's a situation like that. Like, because I harp on doing NBMEs 2331 free 120. So some of you will uh, inadvertently do all of those forms, even if you're not even close to passing. I've said, after you send NBMEs 2021, 
if you fail those forms, I don't want you going on to 22 onward, okay? I want you going back to all your QBank and corrects. Boost your performances before you go to 22 through 31. So sometimes people will use all the fucking forms, and then they meet me, and they're like, well, I don't have any forms to use now. And I'm like, well, we could use like Form 19 or something, okay? So Or a UWSA. So that's when I could you could go earlier. Um, I see 20 through 31 and free 120 as sufficient for step one prep. It's a pass fail exam. You, like, why not do like 16 through 19? You could, you could. Okay, it's not a problem. It's just I see 20 through 31 as tangible and sufficient. You guys need things to like do that are concrete. Okay, and I think that I just I have just subjectively made that call that I think 20 through 31. Uh, and free 120 uh, collectively is sufficient. I don't think you need to do earlier than that, the majority of you. So, and that, uh, that'll all come out to one month and four days generally, the way I like to make schedules. Um, Sagar Patel says, step one in one month, are your PDFs and NBMEs enough? Yes, in the final month, yes, because you're not gonna be touching cubing in the final month. And you can go through my YouTube MCQs as well. Okay, I do like the daily question. Put out two today, actually, holy shit. So Foodies World, I have used all of the IM CMS forms. There's eight of them. Is Family CMS, there's three of them. Uh, good for online test practice to monitor progress for IM shelf prep. Uh, uh, FM is like a soft porn version of IM, okay? It's just a lot of like mild MSK, uh, obviously like non-hospital stuff. But yes, uh, IM and FM are synergistic. Like, you know, like your, those topics overlap for sure. So yes, you can, if you want, you could do the FM forms. Um, for your IM as well, but you got to bear in mind, like when you get to your FM shelf, well, what forms are you going to do? There's already, there's, there's three forms for FM only. Toby says, Michael, I love you. You're the greatest. What happened? You started to do more question answer question mark. I mean, Toby, do you not want me to do question answer? Like what's the, what's the, uh, what's the contention here? I lost my fucking was in the chat. Sometimes when you guys post comments, like the, the chat just like goes to the bottom for me. I'm like, why? I don't want to go to the bottom. Uh, yeah, I mean, I improvise with these Q and A's, okay? I improvise. I think it's better for me to just do it randomly than to like tell you I'm gonna do it on this day because then that makes it annoying for me as well. I don't like to plan shit like that. So uh, Nagin says also, thank you for everything you do. Thank you, Farangus. Ab Abdu Salomova says, hi, Mike, thank you for your PDFs and for your hard work. Got 66.5% and maybe 25. It's borderline. It's a 202. Yep, that's right. It's borderline 197 internal pass. On score convert, is it okay? No, it's not okay. Should I should I continue doing other NBMEs? Yes. Exams in August. If your exam's in August, no, 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 you're too early. Uh, if your exam's in August, uh, I've said this. So let's say a month and four days prior, I want you going to the NBME. So if your exam, let's say, is August 20th, on July, on July 16th, I want you starting and give me 20 and you're going to do two days perform. There's a strategy I have for that, but basically a month out. So between now and uh, July 16th, uh, for Angus, uh, you're going to do QBank. And if you've already done QBank, do your incorrects. And you're going to do my PDFs. You're going to do my YouTube MCQs. I don't want you to know high yield arrows. Case Omar says, Hi, Dr. Mike, is it is that true that the exam is becoming tougher? Uh, answers are getting complicated and the questions are getting long. Did you hear about this from anyone? Uh, I mean, that's all subjective, right? I mean, like it's a uh, tougher, I mean, longer questions, I think by definition could be thought of as tougher. Yes. So if the stems are in, like when I sat the step one a decade ago, in, well, in 2012, uh, I was 322 questions, not 280. Uh, so, I mean, maybe the question stems were shorter at the time, but I don't know. I think it's mostly speculation as far as whether the questions are getting tougher. I don't. I wouldn't say yes to that. If it's multiple choice, I'd say no. They're not getting tougher. Agent Fresh, what do, what do you think of modern dating lifestyle? Also, I'm still doing med questions right now. Agent Fresh. We can get to non med stuff later, but I'm still doing medical questions right now. Uh, Hemer and Muhammad Ahmed says, which NBME step to CK should I? Take, I just finished UWorld with 55% score. You're going to do uh, NBME 6. And if you just finish step one, you're going to do NBME 20. 55% is low, but you're going to see how you do on the. I, I want you to take two NBMEs. You're studying for step two, NBME 6 and 7. If you're studying for step one, you're going to do NBMEs 20, 21. And if you fail those NBMEs, 
I want you going back to all your yield incorrects. I don't want you uh, proceeding with the other NBMEs. Uh, Saleha Murad says, hey, Mike, I'm six days out to my date going through my NBMEs and high yield arrows. Any further advice? Uh, six days out. No, no, that's right. Anything to soothe my anxiety? Yes. Uh, gym is good. Don't neglect that. Uh, dinner with family or friends. Okay. Like take your evenings to like watch a movie or something. Like even though you're six days out, don't want to pin a fucking comment. I didn't click on anything. Um, I'm just finding where I was in the chat. But I mean, like you, you don't have to um, feel like you can't take a break uh, when you're in your final like gunner period and your final dedicated. Um, you got to be able to take breaks. Uh, Saleha, yes, step one. Debbie, Debbie Ali says, is Amboss QBank only enough? No, 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 absolutely not. QBank alone is not enough. Some people ask me variations like of that question, like are your PDFs and NBMEs enough? It's like, I don't care. It's I want you doing QBank. I don't want you not doing QBank, okay? Even if you're like good at school and you get high grades, like I want you doing QBank, I want you doing the NBME content, I want you doing my PDFs, I want you doing my YouTube SQs. So... Uh, Sobe, Sobe Chukuwu Chigokboka says, how to access your PDFs on the free stuff tab on my site. Is that funny? Yeah, there's people here who like, don't know how to get my free PDFs They're on my fucking website under free stuff tab. Uh, Foodies, Foodies World says, I'm extremely grateful to you. I recognize your name from Instagram. Thank you, Foodies World. I am extremely grateful to you. Uh, I have to go for Friday prayer, but inshallah, I will join later. I love these live series. I love beach, barbecue, volleyball, and bonfires. That's sweet. Last time I uh, went I went to a bonfire, uh, it was in Australia. Um, yeah, that's on, that combination, though. Beach, barbecue, volleyball, and bonfires. It's a good combo, isn't it? Last time I played volleyball was in Fiji. It was in Fiji. I played volleyball. Uh, last time I had a barbecue... Well, I'd, I'd barbecue, I'd barbecue chicken today, actually. I was like, yeah. All right. So Ruben Ray says, uh, when you said QBank percentage can be used as a baseline, do you mean tutor untimed? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. It's, it's gotta be random mode though. I don't like when people do sub. like when I try to, if you come to me and I'm trying to assess your general, like where might this person's NBME scores be based on you, you world or emboss percentage. I say like you've been doing it random mode. I don't really care if it's timed or tutor. If you're trying to make this assessment, I just say you've been doing it random mode, and you're like, yeah. And I say like, okay, like what percentage are you getting? Uh, if you're doing it subject specific, it's harder to assess, right? If you've just done like gastro and heme, like how the fuck are we going to over extrapolate? Be able to extrapolate? Um, but um, yeah, I'd say you want 60s in cubic, okay? So 50s borderline, but 60s is what you want in cubic. Thoughts on hobbies during serious prep for Yosemite? Gym, just keep a good gym routine. You got to make room for that. It's good for your psych. Hustle with Ivan says, what do you think about Amboss plus your QBank plus NBMA Swiss Highland Arrows? Yes, it's a good combination. But you got to do, yeah, you said my audio QBank. Uh, yeah, that's fine. So my PDFs, yes. But I do my other PDFs, Hustle with Ivan. I would do cardio, pulm, renal, gastro, heme. Do the others, immuno, do, do them, yeah. Mohammed uh, Al Khaldi says, "Why do you think some people get a high step two score with one pass of U World, and others do it twice plus Ambos and still score poorly?" P.S. I keep forgetting details. People have different testing abilities. That's why I don't want to like harp on it. Okay, but like let's just be real. People have different test taking abilities. Okay, it's not like the end of the world. Uh, you know, like we are, we're good at certain things. We're maybe okay at other things. Like that's just how it is. So Taha Nayar says, I followed your regimen for step one, scored low 80% in almost all NBMEs. That's good. I took it 20th of April. I hope I get the pass. Dude, like what a troll. Taha, yeah, you passed. Okay. If you got like low 60s on your NBMEs, then we'd be questioning whether you pass. Amena Suf Sufia says, Three weeks to exam for step one. I'm borderline in my scores. I did NBME 25 to 31 offline. Uh, my highest being 66%. It's borderline. You need to... Mm, I don't like that. I'd want you sitting NBME 20. Amena, Sufia, you're going to sit NBME 20. Um, and you're going to sit NBME's 20 and 21 
offline. And if you, we're going to convert those to three digit scores. So I want you taking your number of wrongs, plugging those, you're going to Google uh, NBME 20 score conversion Reddit, NBME 21 score conversion Reddit, Google images. You need graphs and you're going to plug in your number of wrongs to the equation. You need a three digit score. We said 197 internals pass for step one. Obviously, you pass fill exam, but 197 is pass internal. I want 205, 210 plus. If you on 20 and 21 are not getting, are not passing, I would just like have you postpone at this point. Uh, but I want to be looking at 205 to 210 plus in the NVMEs before I have a student sit. Okay. If a student's borderline, I don't want you sitting. I don't want people fucking YOLOing. I don't want it to be close like that. Uh, Ashish uh, Gokvarapu says, I'm from India. I had shawarma for dinner. That sounds good. Uh, Taha, where in India? Are you in like uh, Calcutta, Ashish? Are you in uh, Hyderabad? Where are you? Uh, Taha Nayar says, your systems oriented playlist are sick. Thanks for all your effort you put in, Sensei. Cheers, dude. Someone with crazy Arabic name, can't read it, says, should I complete all offline New World? Uh, yes, you should do all of Key Bank. Uh, Fahad Saul says, step three is Amboss CMS and step two NBME are enough. Um, and the CMS forms in two months, six hours a day. Uh, yeah, that's no, two months, not enough time. You got to get through the CMS, you got to get through all of uh, the 1900 questions and well, Amboss, I don't know how many questions are in Amboss for step three. I know UWorld's 1,900 questions, but probably about a month on QBank, and then you're going to do three to three and a half weeks in the CMS forms, and then you're going to do all the step two NBMEs for the step three exam, yes, uh, and CCS study as well. I'd say two and a half, three months is what you need. Three months. Did 50% of, and that's because I want you to do well. I'm not trying to have you YOLO and just fucking pass. William uh, says, did 50% of UWorld with 50% correct? I didn't choose a date. Uh, what to do? Um... Well, you got to just choose it. I mean, it's ideal to choose a date for, you got to calculate when you're going to finish UWorld. And then you got to, after you finish UWorld, you're going to have another month plus of NBMEs that you're going to do. So you can calculate your uh, expected exam date for then. Okay. So maybe it's like two months from now. But if you take NBMEs 2021, 20, you don't pass those. Uh, I'm going to have you go back to all the UWorld incorrects and you're going to have to postpone your exam. You're not going to proceed to NBMEs. And it means 22 onward if you fail 2021. Yosef AS says, have a cardiology elective soon. How can I prepare to kill it and get a letter of recommendation? Sorry if this isn't US familiar really, really. Well, you can do my cardio PDF. It's fucking ace. It is ace. Josh Kim, how should I prep for step two CK, social science and ethics? I have an ethics communication PDF. Josh Kim. Uh, uh, Adeno Hypothesis says, strategy for honoring surgery shelf. Heard a lot of it as I am in ortho. Yeah, I have your high yield surgery PDF and going through the four online CMS forms. There's eight. We'll go through all eight surgery CMS forms twice. Okay. And you're going to do yes to surgery PDF. I want you to go through cardio, pulm, renal, gastro for surgery. And especially the gastro PDF. Go through the gastro. So I have no hypothesis. If you're still in this chat, I want you to go through the gastro PDF. There's so much fucking surgery in that PDF. Okay. You got to fucking know that shit. Um, and of course my playlist on the YouTube. Okay. Go to the surgery playlist. I mean, seriously, Red Bull XMD says, not sure how some people start out with 65 plus percent on UWorld. I just did a random blocking at 45% and that was some lucky guessing. Uh, Melnuts says, do you know if they're going to be changing, switching the questions for step two this summer? Will this impact difficulty? I don't know exactly. I haven't seen announcements on it. If they do change uh, the questions, it's going to impact everyone the same. and It doesn't change your study. No one knows, okay? So it, it cancels out among all test takers. Um, they will sometimes make a, these like pseudo announcements of like we're updating our question pool kind of thing, but like it doesn't change the exam at all, really. It's just sort of like a, a nebulous statement from them. Hustle with Ivan says, what do you think about Amboss Plus? You already fucking asked that. Uh... Okay, so Chek Boka, Sobet Chukwu, uh, Chek Boka says, I'm reviewing my FA. Is it a good idea? I have a month, nine days left. That's a, a highly fucking cuck question. Sobet Chukwu. That's a highly cuck question right there. You should be doing my PDFs. Melman is daddy, says, I have college till like 4 or 5 p.m., mandatory every day. Uh, can I finish all the prep, including video lectures, UWorld? 
uh, PDFs, NBMEs, etc. till October. October. Yeah, October is fucking long, dude. That's a long time. You'll be able to make the time. Uh, 4 to 5 p.m. college every day. Yeah, you're going to have to make the time, but October is doable. Javid says, how well do we need the material and need to know the material in UWorld? Talk about quality also. You just say do UWorld, but you have to explain how well we need to know UWorld and NBMEs. I, what do you mean I've just said like do UWorld? No, Javid, I haven't just said do UWorld. I've articulated like numerous fucking times, answered the same dumb question repeatedly that when you're going through UWorld, you don't have to make annotations. You don't have to obsess with the explanations. I want you to read them slash skim them at a minimum. Yes, but you're not making Anki. You're not making annotations. I've answered that question repeatedly. Ethiopia Cram says, Mike, did UWSA 1 64%? I'm talking NBME. I'm taking an NBME repeat. I only have NBME 31 in, in uh, two weeks. Do you think UWSA overpredict or underpredict? I mean, like UWSA one at lower scores. No, I don't want to speculate on that. I don't. I don't give a fuck about UWSAs. They they tend to predict pretty well, actually. Okay, the UWSAs, um, but I don't want to. I don't like them for true predictive purposes. Like I prefer just the NBME exams. But in your case, you said you only have NBME thirty one that you're sitting in two weeks. Um, so if we took an if you took a UWSA, if you're one of my current students and you sat at UWSA, I would basically tell you, regardless of how shitty or good your score is. I basically tell you that uh, we are not going to take the score to heart, whatever it is. Okay. Like if you get like a 218 or something, like we're not going to uh, obsess over it, but we don't discount it either. Uh, Hannah Ray says, Your explanations of answer choices are amazing. Uh, what would be very helpful is if you could specifically connect all the clues given in questions to thinking it should elicit you to get the diagnosis. Hannah, what the fuck do you think I do in my audio QA? Like, do I not do that already? The thing is, if I make the questions any longer, you guys aren't going to watch. Like, I see the analytics. You guys, like, say to do certain things, and I look at the analytics. Like, people will, like, um, like drop off after, like, five minutes. Like, you guys have sh it's a, a short attention span. So it's, like, uh, I think five minutes is, like, good for audio QA. If I go over five minutes for a clip, I feel like that's long. Uh, Lorenzo Carnio MD says, haha, for sure. Uh, thanks again for getting me the pass on CK, your material, your guidance, and your time was uh, were all integral to my success. Uh, Basil Ahmed says, I have done my FA twice in UWorld once with an average of 60%. Yeah? Have you done uh, Have you done my PDFs, Basil? Or have you just done fucking FA twice? All right. I have one monthly exam and now start to uh, NBME in two days. Can you give me some tips for best productivity? Well, I just did, Basil. You did FA twice. You haven't touched my PDFs. It's like laughable. Uh, Red Bull XMD says, step one, can you talk about whether to do UWorld before NBMEs? Yes, you're doing it. I've talked about this like probably nine times in this live stream right now. UWorld before NBMEs versus doing UWorld up to, no, no, no. Hell no. Are you doing UWorld up to the test date? Terrible fucking decision, okay? So I've said, if some of you are new in this chat right now, you're going to do the final month, it's going to be all NBME exams. You're going to do UWorld or AMBOSS for step one, you're do UWorld or AMBOSS up till about a month or a month a month and four days out then you're going to start 20 through 31 free 120. um hey mike you said between 40 and 80 questions per day for step one that's correct i'm doing around 30 questions per day max not sufficient am i attempting the questions wrong or do i have an undiagnosed intrinsic problem it's yeah the issue is that you uh get bogged down and feeling like you don't remember enough so you are not comfortable moving on that's a problem that that's one of the most common things I observe with students. Okay. You have to become comfortable with just moving on and feel like you're not remembering things. So 30 questions per day, unacceptable. You have to do 40 per day, uh, minimum. So just fucking do it. You, you can do blocks of 10. I've made clips. I'm talking about that. Okay. I'm not going to talk for 90 minutes. I'm doing box 10 right now, but do box of 10 that can improve your efficiency. And if a student is still not getting through the minimum 40 per day, having already uh, tried to do box of 10, I will force the student to do timed 40, which is not what you want to do. It's sort of your punishment. I say, okay, we're going to switch you into doing a timed block of 40. And that's what we're going to do. And then you're going to go through all 40 explanations after. And if you don't get through all 40 explanations, then that's on you. Okay. Because I really make it clear that at some point there has to be some self accountability. It's like a weight loss regimen or like a lifting regimen. I don't know. It's like, you know, they tell you, the trainer is going to tell you to do certain things. And then if you're still fucking eating your McDonald's, 
after all the fucking train after what the trainer has told you you're a fucking idiot all right so fluffy girl says hey mike my exam is august 28th i am done with you world i haven't i didn't read everything properly to be honest my exam uh my NBMEs are 40s and 50s. UWSA is 162. I don't know what to do. Uh, August 20th, fortunately, is not uh, close. Um, you're done with UWorld. You need to go through all your QBank and corrects right now. You're not touching another NBME right now. You need to go through all your, uh, you need to redo all of QBank and corrects. That's probably what I'd have you do, or I'd switch you over to the other QBank. Like if you did UWorld, um, uh, these things, these things, I would talk about in detail with you, but like, uh, I'd either switch you over to another key bank, like Amboss, or I would just have you go through all your U of incorrects. Um, Mashud lost the fucking question because the chat moved on me. Let me see, where was it? Mashud, I'm looking for your question right now. Mashud says, Mashud Faruqi says, Mike, I'm constantly scoring 23 to 27 on CMS forms for two CKs is good. And how would you recommend for those of you watching this clip? I know many of you are step one, but for the step two CMS forms, they're 50 questions. They give you a score of 20 as average. It doesn't, it has nothing to do with 20 questions just for whatever fucking reason you do 50 questions and they'll give you a score of uh, 20 as like average with three as a standard deviation. So let's say you get like eight wrong or something, you get a 42 out of 50 that might come out to like a 25 where you got like almost two standard deviations above the mean. Okay. So um, a shoot is asking 23 to 27 on CMS forms. Uh, that would be very high unless you mean 23 to 27 fucking correct Mashud, which is low. Okay. Mark, you want to get like around 35 to 40 plus. Okay. You want to get at least like 65 to two thirds plus Marco Antonio Montoya is a step one exam, July 30th. Uh, I took it in 25, 42%, not good, Marco. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, UWorld 5% used. Well, where, what's the entitlement? How can I approach to pass step one? Bro, 5% done with UWorld? It's like me getting a fucking 42% on like a practice bar exam with like law school and being like, hey, I only did 5% of like the law school uh, Q bank and I don't know shit. Like, why don't I, what should I do? It's like you got to do their fucking QBank, all right? So you got to you got to do you're not touching another NBME and you're going to postpone a month, okay? So I want you doing all of you world and then I want a month uh, where you're just doing NBMEs. Um let's see. Adam, are you a resident? No. Adam, if so, what specialty are you in? I'm not a resident. Uh Zaruk Ikram says is IMG as an IMG, do we have the chance to match without research and electives? Yes. Uh, you don't need that stuff. Well, obviously, a letter's recommendation, yes, but a lot of that stuff's overrated. So Rook Ikram says the best way to you just need a solid two CK score, and even if you just pass, that's still just fine. You got to I said apply broadly. Research is overrated. I've seen people with lots of research not match okay uh, into like good specialties. Like I, I I'm not going to get too specific, but I've I've, I've seen data points like that. Zaruk Ikram and I talked about that on one of my live streams already. Zaruk Ikram says the best way to study farm and micro. Um, I've got free farm modules on my website. Okay. There's 50 farm modules. They're free. And um, I have paid Anki cards that are farm. For micro, I've got a derm. If, you, if you're wanting to study micro, do my high yield dermatology PDF. It's loaded with micro. And also I've got micro playlists and micro PowerPoints on my YouTube here. The micro PowerPoints are different from my micro playlists for the MCQs. I literally have like 45 minute micro PowerPoint presentations. Okay. And I have a virology PDF on my website on the free stuff tab. If you go below the actual PDFs down to assessments, I have a virology PDF down there. Uh, Shakespeare says, sir, how should I start when I haven't done? Don't ask me that fucking cuck question right now. You mentioned a bunch of cuck resources. Uh, you're just going to start with QBank. Yousef AS says four months to study dermatology for 2CK. What do you mean four months to study dermatology for 2CK? What are you asking, Yousef? Doctor who can sing. Uh, is there any different pattern questions asked these days for step one? No. Faisal uh, Neem says, what time is it? It's 5 a.m. It's 4.58 a.m. for me. 
So yeah, I'm gonna end this stream. I'll end the stream pretty soon. Uh, Vakya, I said I'm only gonna do an hour of questions. Now it's like, but there's like a shitload of questions. I literally did like three hours of fucking questions the other day. Uh, I'll try to keep going though. Doctor who can sing? No. Uh, Vakya Ravunar Ravunar says, could you talk more about the South Dakota Kentucky stuff? Like, what other states should we apply if we have low scores? Um, Wyoming, Indiana, Utah, Arkansas, okay, Mississippi. You gotta apply to, you gotta apply broadly. Um, Promise MD. Uh, your question's too complicated, Promise MD. Done with 59% pass percentage UWSA 2, 193, CBSC June 26. Uh, two and a half weeks. Plan to sit U.S. family in August. Need help with plan? Yeah, you, you you need to sit down. That's what you need. I make Skype plans for people in your situation. Uh, Raja Taha says, "Explain tremors." The fuck do you want me to explain? You want me to do that right now? Explain tremors. Uh, Promise MD says, "How does the one month and four month and four day schedule go?" I talked about it already. Promise MD, like in detail, at the start of this uh, live stream. And so now what's going to happen is we're going to switch to non-med cues in about five minutes. We'll do a small, like non-medical. Some of you get real fucking salty. You're like, Mike, you got to talk about hundred percent medicine for 24 seven, like forever. And like never talk about non-medical stuff. Uh, but I'm doing, I've been doing medic medical stuff for an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, Bugaboo MD. What do you recommend for someone who just took this step more than two times and failed? Which step? But you're going to have to do, um, I'd, I'd want to know when you have to sit it again, or can you just sit it whenever? And we'd have to start you back on QBank or QBank as though you've never fucking prepped and then into the NBMEs again, or we could just have you take an NBME, see, see where you are and just medmonics. Hey, Mike, you said between, no, I read that. Let me see. Uh, AZ, A2Z says, hi, thank you for your effort at helping us pass the US million match. I'm a registered nurse in, UD, in USA. I worked in all specialties. I'm in medical school. Would you say nursing experience counts as US clinical experience? Not really, but like you need a letter. Like, the, like people come from a huge variety of backgrounds, okay? So like what they're going to look at is your scores. Like they just want your step two CK score. If you've been out of medicine for a while, step three will help. Um, and then they want to see that your personal statement is not uh, full of yourself. Okay, you have to have humility in your personal statement. Um, but stuff like volunteer experiences, jobs, a lot, of, a lot of that means jack fucking shit because people exaggerate. Music for all, what to do to improve 57 to 59% and me to pass step one. And what earliest date should I choose for the exam? Um you need to do my high level arrows pdf you need to go through my pdfs uh there's too much to talk about in your situation uh vic bodwar says how accurate is your nbme clinical mastery score to the clinical shelf score accurate neuronal says okay so i took cbsc today and it and what the fuck? it was the most low yield bs i've seen thus far sorry i'm just emotional my school makes us get 70 70 plus to sit which is not cool that is not fucking cool switch fucking schools there's literally schools that like require like a 61, 62, like low scores. Uh, Mojo says, I complete 20% of UWorld and have subscription on Bootcamp, QBank, and I've never heard, I've never recommended that ever. Reem Sham says, Hi, Mike. I'm going fairly fast with UWorld, although I have weak basics. Is this okay? Yes, it's okay. And how to incorporate PDF during UWorld? I've said you're going to do questions in the morning. Then you're going to do like your 40 questions and you're going to have your lunch break and then you're going to have your afternoon evenings where you're doing like pdfs youtube mcs uh mohith b says how's life in japan it's it's good it's good i did a lot of skateboarding today i'm going to transition into non-medical questions non-medical questions uh you guys can ask some non-medical questions you're gonna get fucking salty that i'm not going to talk about medicine straight i i just did 80 80 minutes of uh medicine so if you guys have like non-medical questions, uh, you can drop them. Let's see.
Any non-medical questions, guys? Do I play video games? I don't play video games. I played video games hardcore in high school. Uh, and then I um, I just, like, stopped, like, on the end of a dime when I was, like, around 16. Like, I used to play this, like, foot I used to play, like, football and um, uh, basketball, like, video games. And then just, like, all of a sudden, just, like, there was no transition out for me. I just stopped playing, like, all together when I was, like, 17. I was really fucking nerdy until I was, like, 17 and a, and a half, maybe. And then I became like cool. I know that sounds that doesn't sound cool, but I became like I don't know. I was really nerdy in high school until I was like seventeen and a half, and then I became like popular senior year. Uh, <laughs> Mel nuts, why Japan? I like Asian chicks. Jimmy Glenn's why Japan? I just said I like Asian chicks. Uh, William, how much is your net worth? Kathy, Kathy frame chess. Yeah. I mean, I've talked about, I played like for someone who doesn't play chess, I'm good at chess. Like you get some people who are real serious. Like, Oh, Mike, what's your like ELO rating? Like, Holy shit. Like, no, no, no. I'm not like that. Like I've never studied fucking chess, but like, if I just sit down at a fucking board with like someone else who doesn't play chess, uh, I tend to win. Talk about Dr. Tao Lee from first aid. Dr. Tao Lee from First Aid is like the, he's got a very fucking positive energy. Uh, he's always happy, uh, smiling, um, very fucking positive. And I would just say he has a lot of positive energy, very good guy, a very strong team player. Um, he's a straight shooter, Dr. Tao Lee. And then Vakas, uh, who also started First Aid. Uh, Vakas is like pure entrepreneurial. Uh, he's constantly like moving with his thoughts, uh, constantly talking, doesn't allow others to talk, but it's, he's just got, he's a, he's a flight of ideas, but he's a very effectual, uh, entrepreneur. Doc Narala says, are you a parent doctor? Am I a parent doctor? Do I, you mean, do I have like under over 20 kids? Is that what you're asking me? Zick Zui <laughs> says bicep routine. Drop it. Drop your biceps routine. I do biceps. That's true. I'm not wearing a tight shirt though. This isn't like a fitted shirt. This is like a loose, a loose shirt. Favorite coffee order. Um, yeah, I mean, cappuccino is like, there's, there's a good Italian cafe here in Japan uh that i go to and they have the best fucking cappuccino very solid i try to avoid sweet stuff just because of calories like i because i'm in a fitness you know what i mean so i try to like avoid sweet stuff but like you know mocha stuff like that obviously fucking delicious as fuck but like i try to stay away from that sort of thing but cappuccino is good not adhd the fuck out while reviewing how do i not adhd the fuck out while reviewing questions Muhammad, we're doing non-medical questions right now. I know some of you get salty. You're like, Mike, you gotta, Mike, talk about medicine forever. Mike, only talk about medicine. Muhammad, uh, no, Mel Nuts, clothing brand recommendations. Uh, dude, I get my clothing, a lot of my clothing from like thrift, there's like thrift stores. Like I've worn some jean jackets uh, that cost me like $3. There's like used, there's used clothing. Like I buy some used clothing in, in my neighborhood uh, from like old fucking Japanese people. They're just, it's just like, I'm low maintenance on that stuff. But I spend a lot of fucking money on uh, underwear and socks. I buy very, I know it's like a TMI, too much information, but like uh, I, I buy very fucking expensive underwear. Let's see. Show me how you get your biceps, senpai. <laughs> Adona, Adona says, how should I avoid burnout? Go to the gym. How, uh, and eat spicy food. Eat, eat very spicy food. Let's see. Uh, Ahmed Mubash, uh, Mubashar, Mubashar says, do you like Afghanistan? I do like Afghanistan. I know I have some friends from Afghanistan. Um, 
I want to try Afghanistan food, but I have some friends from Afghanistan. Uh, Raja Sohail says, why did you change your looks? Um, that's, I think we're heading in that direction culturally with like looks maxing. Uh, women have higher standards now than they used to. So blame it on like that. Uh, let's see. Mahmoud Hashem says, please, Dr. Mike, one more medical question. My exam is in one week. I didn't do all CMS forms. Should I see? Doesn't it sound kind of boring if I move back into like a medical question after that? Like, do you guys want me to like talk about medicine again? Like right now? So you're like, yeah, talk about medicine, Michael. And I didn't do all CMS forms. Should I do them all? No, I, I like came and processed that. Like I literally can't process like a medical question right now. Sachi Sharma says, if not med, what would you want to do in life? Um, I would only, I would just study kanji. Literally, I would just study kanji and I would do like the, uh, I would want to do the, there's like the national Japanese kanji exams that are like extremely difficult that like very few people, you have to, like, there's 1,987 Joyo kanji around that amount. It's about 2,000 Joyo kanji, which are like the kanji used in everyday use. Um, but beyond that, you're talking difficult words, difficult kanji. And uh, but kanji was my strength when I was at the Japanese school, immersion school here. And I would just sit in silence and do kanji. I would just study kanji pretty much. If I didn't have to worry about like making income, I would just do kanji. And I would have like a kanji YouTube channel. It would be weird. It would be like, I'd be like a white dude, a white foreigner who like his Japanese is not native level. Um, who just is like the fucking beast at kanji. Like that's what it would have been. That's like a weird parallel like life. I could do it. You say, why not do it? Well, it's also good to survive and have an income, isn't it? Let's see. Mo Clip says, I had dropped them in med school. But I pick I picked back up some more competitive ones. What are you talking about, Mo Clips? Rosaneri, do you work as a doctor in Japan? No, I don't. Uh, William, do you have a girlfriend? Many. Pindboy23 says, Do you how to write an article? Uh, I am an I am a good writer. But it's I would say that's because I, I went to school for a long time. Like I did a master's as well. I did a lot of writing. Like I'm a, I'm a good writer. I'm pissed off that chat GPT can help people write. That pisses me the fuck off. Cause like writing is like an advantage I I've always had. And so like the fact that you can take someone who doesn't know how to write and just like, they can come up with some bullshit fucking like essay on like chat GPT or something pisses me off. Cause, um, what do you gotta do? Bro, why do you use fuck words so much? No offense though. Just kidding. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta chill the fuck out. Kathy Frame, what is your specialty, by the way? I'm new here, so I don't know. I'm not fucking, a, I'm not a practicing doctor. I have zero fucking interest in that. If I want to be a practicing doctor, though, I would do family medicine. I think family medicine is the best. I, that was my favorite special. That was my favorite rotation in med school, family medicine. It was in rural Australia. It was, uh, it was really, it was awesome. What universities places are highly sought after for residency? What do you think? I mean, of course, there's like names that come to mind, but it's not about that. You got to just like apply broadly, not be entitled, apply to fucking Arkansas. Like at this point in my life, I would, I would like hands down rather go to Alaska or Hawaii than like Boston. Like if someone's like, you can go to like Harvard, MGH, or go to like fucking Hawaii. I'd be like, I'm going to Hawaii. I'll do family medicine in Hawaii. I'm not fucking going to like New York or Massachusetts. That'd be fucking sick. I would, I would, I would practice in Hawaii. Agent Fresh, can I do your old questions that work on my iPhone as a research assistant? That sounds like a great fucking question for me to answer right now, Agent Fresh. Coconut MD, I just want to see you laugh. People have like a fixation with me not like smiling enough. It's like, chill the fuck out. You got to smile more, Michael. You got to laugh more. Uh, Zig Zui says, Mike, do Asian girls have more grip? Or that's, that's such a bad question, dude. In, in, in all fucking capitals as well. In all fucking capitals. Agent Fresh, <clears throat> Alaska will accept anyone. No, they won't. No, they won't. They absolutely will not. The third son. 
Fuck, I lost your question. Uh, the third son, what is your religion? I, I was raised Jewish. Uh, I've been to Israel four times, but I'm not religious. Uh, I would say I'm agnostic. Uh, I've talked about that in my other streams. Mariam Sadiq, what do you do in the last week of dedicated? High yield arrows, that's what you want to do. Agent Fresh with all the emojis. Kathy Frame says, what do you do in Japan? Pick up chicks. Abu, do, Abu Dose 94, do you watch anime? I've watched Jojo. I've talked about that. I'm not like a huge anime person. There's ota otaku means like like nerdy. I'm not like the classic like otaku. Like a lot of people are like, want, a lot of the gaijin, the foreigners who come here, like wanna be Japanese like anime otaku. Like they want to be like, um, they're just wannabes. I'm not a wannabe fucking like on that front. Like I was never really into like, I'm going to do anime. Oh my God. Like I'm going to look, I'm going to, I'm going to watch anime every day. Some people are like, they just try to like go that route. Uh, Laba Daba whatever says looks maxing is what's up. I mean, it is like, I was never like this originally, but like, I mean, looks maxing. Uh, I've said, <clears throat> I've already said women only care about looks. That's my view. I've said that women like will date guys who are more plain. If, if uh, an attractive woman, an attractive woman will date guy, a guy who's more plain in appearance if he's in her social circle. Like if, if it's a guy she knows from the office or a guy who was like introduced to her from her best friend or like, um, a guy she's seen in class or in a group discussion repeatedly, and he's like more plain in appearance. She might date him because he's social circle, but like, if she doesn't know the dude, if it's some dude who approaches her on the street, uh, women only care about looks. Women don't care about guys' personalities. Uh, and they don't really care about money uh, for most guys. The guy has to be like a fucking like NBA fucking like multimillionaire for her to actually, uh, for her to override the female's interest in looks. Uh, Mohith B says, do you watch Japanese anime? What's your thoughts of Black Pill? I kind of just mentioned that right now, didn't I? I've said that. I just mentioned that a little bit. Uh, it's nothing cynical or negative. Like, I'm just citing what's like, there's probably some girls watching this who are like, yeah, he's right, actually. I only care about looks. It's true. That's what women care about. Like, they, they don't really care who the guy is, personality-wise. He talks about this extensively on his blog. He's a PUA expert. Zig Zoe. Rose Scenario says, in case we move back to medicine, I always get 65 plus on my UWorld blog. Let's talk about UWorld. Rejuvenate Simple says, wow, that's so cool. Ahmed Mushar, Ronaldo, or M Macy. Um, they're both fucking like, I respect them in different ways. Uh, I think R Ronaldo lost a son, I think. And so I think he's probably like, I, I have like a deep, you know, respect for the hardship he's probably had to go through. Osman Kayani says, why don't you practice men? Why does the tutoring make you enough? Uh, I don't have interest in practicing men. Like some people find that like radical that like, I don't have an interest in, like, why would I want to be some cuck fucking doctor? Like I, I have no interest in that. Um, does the tutoring make you enough? Like, uh, I don't really think of it like that. I'm just good at it. I don't really know what to say. Like, I'm just good at medicine, but like, I'm not interested. Some people are like astonished about it. They're like, Mike, you're so passionate. I'm like, you're, I'm running at like 10% effort. Like if I gave a fuck and I like actually put in like 15 hours a day and like I could do a lot, I could pump out a lot of fucking shit. You have no idea. Yash Ranga says, you world versus real deal, please, for step one, which is harder. Um, the NBME is the real deal, not you world. What does your hat say? It says New Era Osaka, New Era Osaka. It's katakana. It's a phonetic script, Japanese. This hat was like 120 bucks. It, you can't find this hat anymore. Let's see. Kanji with calligraphy. I like kanji. In case you move back to medicine, I always get 65 plus. No, we're not talking about UWorld right now. 
some guys, are, some some of you here are really fucking angry. I'm not talking about medicine right now. I was talking about medicine for like the first 80 minutes of this chat. You know, there is more to like life than medicine. What do you think about research rotation? Uh, overrated. Research is overrated. If it gets you a letter, if it gets you like, uh, you know, a paper, that's cool. It's a cool checkoff, but like. Being a poly Mustafa asks, and you're a member of my channel. I appreciate it. I, I can see your member because your name is highlighted green. Everybody else's is gray. And you got the little symbol, my Mellon medical symbol next to you. So I appreciate Mustafa that you're a member of my channel. Being a polyglot, polyglot means you speak many languages. Being a polyglot raises IQ, question mark, helps in retaining info, question mark. I don't think it relates. I'm not like the, it's weird because my English like writing is very good. Um, but I'm not like naturally like language that way. I don't think it's related that way. Um, rejuvenate simple. That pisses me off too. That chat GPT can generate scripts. Yeah, it, no, it pisses me off. Cause like I'm a good writer. And so you get people who can't fucking write who now can like get these essays that, I mean, but I'm out of school, so it doesn't matter for me on that front, but I just think in general, like the principle of it, like, um, I romanticize like just being able to like generate your own fucking writing, your writing. Agent Fresh asks, what's your thoughts on modern day lifestyle? And you put in capitals. If that's referring to like a book or like a, a channel, I actually don't know what that refers to. You're, if you're surprised, I don't follow people's like dating content. William, do you have a, do you have a roommate? Dude, I'm fucking 36. You think I have a fucking roommate? If you're if you're trying to like ask like, do I have like a female living in my place right now? I mean, I could have multiple fucking places. I, I have an unconventional uh, lifestyle. Just put it that way. Amir Akbari says family medicine. Uh, ew, you don't like family medicine? Yeah, family medicine's great. I love family medicine. William D fast? No, I don't. I think that's beta shit. Guys who fast, that's beta. Like, you, you can do cardio. I think, like, you can integrate cardio, but, like, fasting? Nah, I'm not into that shit. I'd rather just eat protein. Agent Fresh, live in Japan, modern lifestyle. What's your favorite road trip to Japan so far? Um, I would say um, there's a place called uh, Tokori. Totori, that's uh, that's north of where I am that I had driven to, and they have uh, natural sand dunes there, and that was pretty fucking awesome. I've driven around this island. Agent Fresh, are you black pill? Uh, it's not. It's not. There's no like, are you black pill or are you red pill? It's more like, do you have like aware certain aware awarenesses, um, of like different aspects. Do you have tattoos? Nah, I have piercings. Bruce Wayne, I am Batman. Nice, Bruce Wayne. I am scoring, Yash says, I'm scoring 80 in New World. What can I expect on Real Deal? It's high, fucking Yash. Five question marks for like, I am scoring 80 in New World, will I pass? Like, literally, dude. F Freya Reina says, thank you, Mike, for everything. You are the best. Thanks, Freya. Amena so Sufia says, how often do you do live q and I don't know, like maybe like, because I just did three of these, right? But like maybe I won't do one for a while. I have no idea. Tatiana says, I would love to fuck off to Alaska. Yeah, that'd be fucking nice. I mean, because it's either like, it's like a, a pretty like, excite, it's like a cool place to go to, but it's cold. Or you go to like a cool place like Hawaii and it's warm. I would choose Hawaii first, then Alaska. What's your workout split? What do you mean by that? Oh, like how do I, uh, I sort of just subjectively, I don't make it formal. I go in there and I'm just like, I need to do certain muscle groups. I kind of feel out like what I haven't done in like a few days or I need to like boost something. And I never forget leg day, of course. Jim Solak says, boss, Dr. Mike, not to cross any red line. <laughs> You're asking about my zygoma. Yeah. I mean, I've said books maxing. I just, I just lost the question I was reading. I've talked about appearance in my other, like, I, I talked about that in my other streams already. 
I, I said I grew up like with very negative influences about my appearance. I had very negative, like, uh, I don't think that's unique to me. I think like people will, that's pretty common actually, but like I had very negative like voices that like um, made me feel shitty about my appearance. And then through my twenties, that was like something I really struggled with. Um, but now I'm 30s. I feel much better now. Like the fact that I can even like say that in like a public uh, platform, that's like, I've come a long way. Would you say you're motivated by money? Uh, I'm not. If I were motivated by money, if money were my true pure focus, um, I would have, I would just do, I would focus on other things. I'd focus way more on like business and like um, trading. I'd put a lot of time into like trading, uh, like crypto. I would put a lot of time into that if it were just, if it were just raw money, nothing else. I happen to be like good at medicine. I kind of run with it. Like I said, I'm not passionate about it, but like I run with it. Do you have Japanese friends? Asked William. Yeah, I do. Daniel Stein. Favorite non-medical conversations you like to have? I don't really think of it like that. There's no like, there's no like, spe uh, it's no specific conversation I like prefer to have. I normally don't have like deep conversations with people. I prefer to just like, um, but I do have um, unconventional hobbies. Tatiana Gonzalez, favorite Japanese food, kata miso ramen, spicy miso ramen. It's fucking amazing. Mo McClip says, women just love money. No, obviously women like money, but women care about looks. Women just care about looks. The guy can be poor, but if he's like very attractive, she's okay with that. Yasin, you says, hmm. So Yasin says, thanks, you're cringe and you shouldn't have done any plastic surgery and you look gay. I don't agree with him though. Yeah, well, you're a fucking asshole. I mean, but the, I'm okay answering. I'm okay addressing that because um, when you're in my position and you're growing in influence, and I'm, I'm not big, but like when you're growing in influence, you have to be able to handle people uh, giving you hate and criticism. That's what you have to handle. You have to handle like uh, people saying shit to you. And you have to handle people saying stuff on forums without you being able to respond. Like you could fucking say the same comment, uh, like you're cringe, all this stuff. You look gay, all this stuff. It's literally in your fucking comment here. I'm reading it. And you could go write your little like your little mousy post on Reddit or the fuck you want to do. And I'm not going to I'm not responding to it. But you can go say your like negative comments. You have to be able to handle that as you grow in influence. You know? That's like what you start to learn. As I said, there's, I'm not big. I'm not big. 15K plus on YouTube, that's not big. Like people like who have influence, they, the more influence you have, like what comes with that is the more, is more negativity and criticism against you. More people talking fucking shit with big fucking mouth, with their fucking judgment. You got your fucking judgment of other people. That's what it is. You're a fucking nobody, and you got your fucking judgment of someone you don't even know. You got a big fucking mouth. Where was I reading your question? Let me see. What's your thought on AUA? <laughs> on AUA school? That's funny. Um, I mean, I have a lot, I know a lot of people who go to AUA. Um, I think they shouldn't have switched to the the, the non NBME proctored or sponsored exam, you know, but I don't, I don't know if that was in their control. I think there were, there were issues they were having. I think that any school that's no longer having their comp based on a NBME, it's, it's a downside because it means that if you originally, if you pass comp, it meant that you're ready to sit step one. But if you, um, if your comp is not based on NBME anymore, then you're not necessarily ready to sit step one. Like, what is the, what's the benchmark? Like, what, what is it? What does passing comp even mean if it's not based on NBME? It doesn't mean shit. Div says, do you watch K-pop or K-dramas? Um, I sometimes listen to K-pop at the gym. I do. I listen to K-pop sometimes. Um, is Illinois a nice place to live? What do you think about that state? I don't know. I've never lived in Illinois. Like Chicago, I've been to Chicago. 
I visited Northwestern University, like when I was applying to colleges, like from high school. That's when I went to Chicago. It's the only time I've been there. It's just once. Agent Fresh says, I don't think women care about looks. I see too many women. I see many women with ugly, assertive guys. Um, I, as I talked about, women are okay being with guys who are less attractive if the guy tends to be in their social circle. That's the most, that's the majority of cases. I'm not saying like it has to be that way. I'm saying like most of the time, uh, if a woman, if you see an attractive woman with a guy who's not so attractive, not there's no negative judgment. It's just saying like if, if that happens to be what you observe, she tends to know that guy through social circles. She knows him from a friend, friend of a friend or through a friend group, or he was in her group discussion at fucking university where like they work in the same like office and they see each other a lot. Okay. But if she's meeting some dude on the fucking street, if she's meeting some dude out at a bar, she's not going to like, the women care about looks. That's all they fucking care about. Uh, what do you know about Sudan? Uh, I dated some chick from Sudan when I was in Australia. And my opening line, she was a barista at the library uh, cafe. And she had a shaved head, but she was like hot as fuck. And she had super white fucking teeth. And I, my opening line to her was like, uh, like you're jet black. I was like, you're fucking like jet black. That's what I said to her. And she like laughed at that. And I was like, your teeth are fucking white. Let's see. And I like cut things off with her because she, uh, she was in a strength training and she like prepped for like a bodybuilding competition. She got like jacked fucking like shoulders. I'm not joking. Like, I'm not joking right now. She was super hot, but she was like, uh, I could like, I didn't like that she had muscle, like big muscle upper body. Like I'm not into that. I was not into that. I, like I couldn't, I didn't like that. I don't like girls with like um, big jacked fucking arms. Like if a chick has like arms that are bigger than mine, that's a problem. Uh, let's see. Rejuvenate Simple says, what's your favorite Japanese food? I already fucking answered that, Rejuvenate Simple. I said Kata Miso Ramen. Um... I don't know what that image is. Oh, you got a fucking emoji there, June Lee. June Lee. Look at that. It's a good emoji there. I, uh, if you're a member of my channel, uh, there's like custom emojis you can use, and I use a custom emoji of my hand gesture. That's pretty fucking cool. June Lee. It's the first time I've seen someone use that one. Because people don't usually comment under my videos with like those emojis. What are alternative alternative carriers for medical graduates? What are other languages you speak? Um, Japanese English. I could speak Spanish before I moved to us before I moved to Japan. I I was conversational in Spanish. I forgot my fucking Spanish. Um, but I mean, my my most recent like ex girlfriend before I moved to Japan was from Colombia, and so I used to speak Spanish with her. How many? How many? fights have you gone into uh none i'm not like i uh no i shouldn't no people have tried to fight me before i actually have a cool head i'm a, i have a really cool head in terms of like um i'm able to diffuse things i'm not like i don't think you need to be confrontational you need to control not be confrontational Agent Fresh. Jun Lee says, I miss Fukuoka so much. You went to Fukuoka, Jun Lee? Fukuoka was boring as fuck when I went there. Uh, but they had really good chicken at night. Did you have the Jun Lee? Did you have the chicken in Fukuoka at night? Uh, they're known for that. They're street chicken in Fukuoka. I did have that. That's a, that is a plus of Fukuoka. Fukuoka is in Western Japan, for any of you who don't know. Hannah Lee says, uh, why do you make all your clips at 3 to 4 a.m. your time rather than at more normal hours? Well, it's more it's normal hours for you. It's, I don't know, it's just my schedule. I teach on the U.S. time zones generally. So my students I have at like my night, which is usually like, you know, it's going to be the U.S. like mornings. That's how I've adjusted my schedule. Daniel Stein, do you surf? I did in Australia. I don't like prefer to surf though. Like I only surfed in like first year med really. Cause you move to Australia and you're like, hell yeah, I'm gonna surf. Oh my God. 
you know, so I surfed, you know, it's like I surfed in Australia. I had a surfboard for many years, but like it was first year med mainly when I surfed. Uh, Cause I had, a, I had a friend in my dormitory who was in second year med and he had a, a van and we would go to the, the beach. Let's see, Mirza production. Asking, asking more things. There you go. Mohith B, I lost it. Lost it. Lost your question, Mohith B. Where is the question? You are a permanent resident in Japan? Not yet. Uh, what is your favorite music genre? Um, I wouldn't say I have one. I don't know if that was the answer you're looking for. Uh, I like K-pop, but I I listen to like uh, electronic music as well at the gym, like techno, electronic. If they ever need a doctor on a plane, would you consider yourself helping if there is no one? Yeah, if there's no one around. Do you like sushi? Abudos nutty for us. Uh, I prefer sashimi. I don't really eat a lot of white rice. I don't because it's carbs. I don't need the white rice. There's no entitlement to having a six pack. You have to do like dumb shit like that. Like it's small things that add up. Mirza production. Mirza production. Let me see. So you asked Mirza production. You have the audacity to ask me like a question about like, like what is my profession? And I'm supposed to answer you. But meanwhile, if I scroll up, you ask like you made negative comments about my face. So fuck you. That, I said this earlier though. If you're like growing an influence, you have to be able to handle like people saying negative shit about you. That's what it is. <clears throat> Say your negative fucking shit. Criticize me. Uh, impose negative judgments on me. That's fine. <laughs> Mustafa, welcome back. See, the thing is, I there's like multiple. I know multiple fucking Mustafas, so I don't know like which Mustafa, but I know multiple fucking Mustafas. I admire how you handle adversity. Rejuvenate simply. I admire how you handle adversity. Is motivating. Thank you. Offbeat medicine. Hey, you're perfect. I lost where I was. I rejuvenate simple. What music do you enjoy listening to on loop? On loop? I don't fucking listen to music on loop. Rejuvenate simple. Ja uh, William, Japanese or Australian girls? Absolutely. Oh, I'm into Asian girls. I like Asian girls. <laughs> Hence, I moved to fucking Asia. Um, like, I used to only like white girls until I was like 27. And I used to not like Asian girls. Now I like mainly like Asian girls. Offbeat Medicine says, you are helping so many medical students. Um, <laughs> Avishi Agrawal says, you are an inspiration. Literally look up to you as a fucking, as a budding doctor. Appreciate it. Chris Nutter, how long have you lived in Japan? Seven years. Near seven years. That's pretty fucked, isn't it? I was in Australia. So I lived in Australia seven years as well. So you like BTS or Stray Kid? Not necessarily. Jim Solik. Boss Dr. Mike, what is your favorite summer destination? Um, in summer. I like my favorite place to go is Korea, South Korea. South Korea is my favorite place for sure. For just like casual travel. And for from where I am, it's like very cheap to go to South Korea. It's like you can get round trip tickets like pretty fuck like 200 bucks or something. It's like not it's not expensive. Uh That's funny. Uh, Ali Muhammad, if you had an option to relive your 20s, would you still pursue medicine? Uh, the answer is no. I would um, I would have traveled. Like, I did travel, but I mean, as I said, I lived in Australia. I would, um, I would just, like, I would backpack a lot more. I would literally just be, like, indigent. I would live like a poor fucking schmuck. Um, and I would go to, like, more third world places. I would hit up like, yeah, I would do like Africa. I'd be doing like more risky places if I were like doing things over again. You say, well, why not do it now? 
I could, but I mean, I'm also more, I'm starting to develop some cadence and some establishment. Jim Solik, what's your favorite joke slash anecdote that makes you burst laughing? None, dude. That's funny though. That is funny actually. That's funny. Could you imagine me like bursting out laughing? Like I don't really like, I'm not really like that. Um, you went to Beitpu Onsen, Jun Lee, for Onsen. I'm going to an Onsen in like a few days, like a, a hot springs. Faisal Hussein, where do you grow up in the US? I grew up in New York. And then I moved to Boston, and then I moved to Australia, and then Japan. <laughs> Labadab says, I'm struggling with women. Please give me tips. Which city in Japan do Mohit B says, which city in Japan do you like? Uh, Osaka is the best. Then I also like Sapporo, northern Japan. Anne, Anne Meli Bakar says, lose, says, loser. Fuck you. Vakya Ravanur says, where in the U.S. did you live? How was it? And would you recommend living there? Um, I wouldn't recommend living in the U.S. because of guns. Like that's, I, I said that I, that's why I wouldn't want to live in the U.S. So it's like, you know, some people think it's a stupid reason not to want to live in the U.S. But like, why would I want to be around fucking like guns? But if I were to move to the U.S., it would be like, as I already said, I would maybe go to Hawaii or something or like a, I don't know, place with good barbecue. Um, Div says, maybe you need mods in live chat to block these rude people. I don't think so. It's a thought, but I, I don't think so. As I said, you have to be able to handle criticism. As you grow in influence, you have to be able to handle like people saying negative shit about you people judging you negatively and um, criticizing you. Yeah, 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 it's fine. I've seen many haters on Reddit. Yeah, 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 that's fine. You got to be able to handle like uh, people saying bad stuff. AD says you're really fucking awesome. Like, what's your, what's your, uh, what's special about Japanese girls? Are you into Asian boy? Definitely not. I'm 100% straight. Chris Nutter, I've lived in Seisubo, Japan for two years. So Seisubo, Japan. I haven't even heard of that. Where is that? I've literally never fucking heard of that. Sasebo? Where is that? Chris Nutter? <laughs> Damn, come to Pusan. Are you in Pusan? Pusan. I mean, I mean, of course, Pusan's fucking amazing. Pusan, I love Pusan. I've been to Pusan four times. I've been to Daegu. I hope all your travel wishes come true. What is life? Are you into clubbing? I'm not into clubbing, really. Do you graduate from medical school? Yes, I did. That's so funny. Like, you get some people who, like, question whether I fucking, yes, I graduated medical school, Agent Fresh. And I have a master's as well. What medical specialty would I have done at family medicine? Oh, my God, how is life in New York? It's easy to make friends there. Um, well, I was in upstate New York. So it was um, until I was 18. That's where I was. As I said, I moved to Boston. The city, though, I mean, I've visited the city plenty of times. So I didn't grow up in the actual city. I've been down to South Africa. I haven't been down to South Africa. What is special about Japan? Um, Japan is really easy to fucking live in. And obviously, everybody loves coming here. Culture is very rich. You know, it's got a lot of check boxes. It's a very, like, great place to live. Um but I would, I'd be happy other places too, for sure. I, mean, I think I'm going to end this chat. It's 5.43 a.m. where I am. I have to fucking like, I have to eat. And then I'm going to um, shower, shave, and sleep. I'll get to sleep by like 8 a.m. probably. Ever been to Germany? I haven't been in Germany. Oh, it's near, it's near Nagasaki. I didn't know that. I haven't been in Nagasaki. I haven't been there. I wanted to go there. I was on a road trip. I've been to Hiroshima. But Hira, uh, Nagasaki is kind of out of the way. You got to go south, uh, southwest to go to Nagasaki. I was driving on a, I was on a road trip when I considered going there. 
do you not go insane with that isolation? I don't feel, I'm not isolated. What do you mean? And with the internet, we're not fucking isolated. But no, I have, I feel, I have a very like social, I have a very social life. I'm not isolated even like 1%. All right, guys. So I'm gonna end this fucking stream right now. Thanks. Thanks for being around, guys.